John Rees, a former CIA agent and Army Special Forces soldier who is now a homeless alcoholic, is arrested for getting into a fight on a New York subway train. He is bailed out before homicide detective Joss Carter can question him about DNA evidence linking him to a series of killings. Reese is brought to a mysterious tech billionaire named Harold Finch, who explains that after the September 11 attacks, he designed an algorithm capable of predicting crimes by analyzing behavioral patterns in massive amounts of surveillance data. The program, dubbed The Machine, provides the social security number of a person it predicts to be involved in an impending crime, either as a victim or a perpetrator. Unfortunately, the government only considered events related to national security and mass destruction, ignoring individual crimes they deemed irrelevant. That's why Finch is looking for someone highly skilled to prevent these irrelevant crimes. Reese initially rejects the offer but eventually agrees to help. Starting from the present day in 2011, let's delve into the past of both Finch and Reese. Born in 1962 and growing up somewhere in the USA, Harold was a genius from childhood. By 1980, as a teenager, his accomplishments included building a machine for his father, who was suffering from dementia, and hacking into a parnet to make it freely available to the world. He later enrolled at MIT under the alias, Harold Wren, along with his brilliant friends Nathan Ingram and Arthur Claypool. After graduating at the top of his class at MIT, Nathan founded a tech company, IFT, with Finch working in the background. In 2001, while Finch was developing an algorithm, Nathan brought him the bad news of the September 11 attacks, which they watched unfold on TV. Following the attacks, the American government hired Nathan to build a machine that would predict future mass attacks on the United States, utilizing digital feeds from the NSA. Harold built the machine anonymously while Nathan took the credit and dealt with the bureaucracy and government side of things. In 2006, while Finch was in the park with Ingram, a woman randomly appeared on Finch's screen. Initially, he thought it was a bug, but it turned out the machine recommended that woman, Grace Hendricks, to Finch. They began dating, and Finch eventually proposed to her, but he remained cautious about revealing his true identity to Grace. By 2010, the machine had already prevented several large-scale attacks. However, since the government didn't care about individual crimes, the general public continued to suffer. Every night at midnight, the machine's irrelevant list was deleted. Nathan wanted to save these people, but Finch disagreed, fearing for their safety as several people associated with the machine had mysteriously disappeared, likely killed by the government to protect secrets. Without Finch's help, Nathan started working on the irrelevant list on his own, creating a backdoor to the machine named Contingency, in case the government misused it. One day, Finch became suspicious of Ingram and followed him to a building where he discovered all the details about the irrelevant list. They had a heated argument, and Finch disabled the backdoor. Nathan threatened to go to the press and reveal everything. He invited Finch to a ferry terminal to join him. The next day, Finch arrived at the terminal and saw Nathan. They smiled at each other for a moment before a bomb exploded, causing Finch to lose consciousness. He woke up in a hospital bed to find out Nathan was dead. Avoiding his fiancée Grace, who had just entered the hospital, Finch somehow made it to the interface they used to communicate with the machine. He resumed the function, contingency, only to discover that Nathan Ingram was on the irrelevant list. This moment made him realize that everyone is relevant to someone. Flashbacks showed how the government and a special counsel used Hirsch, a government assassin, to plant a suicide bomber to kill Nathan Ingram. On the other hand, John Reese was a former military special forces member who left the military in 2001. While having a good time in Mexico with his girlfriend Jessica, the September 11 attacks occurred. Years later, he was recruited by the CIA. Since John was married to his work, Jessica left him. On February 12, 2006, Reese ran into his former girlfriend Jessica at the airport and told her he had found a new, secretive job. 
She told him she was engaged to a man named Peter Arndt but would wait for him if he asked. Reese refused. Kara Stanton was assigned as Reese's partner in the CIA. They undertook numerous missions together. In 2010, Mark Snow and Alicia Corwin of the NSA informed Reese and Stanton that they were being sent to China to retrieve a high-profile computer virus in a laptop stolen from the Pentagon by the Chinese. Just before leaving for Ordos, Reese received separate orders to kill Kara after the mission, as she was compromised. In Ordos, they found the laptop and retrieved it, but were confused about its purpose and why it was left behind. They signaled that their mission was completed, but Kara suddenly shot Reese, saying she had orders to kill him as he was compromised. With a smile, Reese revealed he had the same orders, meaning their CIA leaders wanted to eliminate anyone who had contact with the laptop, including Reese and Kara. An airstrike hit their location, and Reese somehow managed to escape while Kara was apparently killed. Wounded, Reese returned to New York to meet Jessica as she had requested earlier, only to find out she was killed in a car accident. Reese was convinced it was orchestrated by Peter. While leaving the hospital, Reese accidentally bumped into someone, who turned out to be Harold Finch, who was looking for him at the time. Later, it was revealed that Marshal Peter Arndt was violently killed. Flashbacks showed Reese inside Peter's home, clarifying what happened to Peter. Betrayed by the CIA, Reese lived as an alcoholic in New York City until he met Finch. Back in the present day of 2011, Reese and Finch tackle numerous cases from the irrelevant list together. Reese kills Stills, a corrupt cop, and hides the body in the trunk of another corrupt NYPD officer, Lionel Fusco, blackmailing him to gain internal information from the police. Eventually, Fusco becomes a valuable asset. The protagonists then assign him as an undercover member of HR, a clandestine network of corrupt NYPD officers. Patrick Simmons is a major character in HR. After several months, it is revealed that Alonzo Quinn, a supporter of one of the mayoral candidates, is the true leader of HR. As John's DNA is found at many crime scenes, he becomes a wanted person for the NYPD and FBI, earning the nickname Man in the Suit. Consequently, Carter starts following him. Meanwhile, she uncovers several murder cases connected to a figure named Elias. They realize there is a battle between Elias and the Russian and Sicilian Mafia over the Brighton Beach area. In the past, young Elias grew up hating his biological father, Moretti, who had an affair with his mother, Marlene Elias, leading to her death. Now, Elias is on a mission to control Brighton Beach, which Moretti had done decades ago. After several numbers come up, the machine gives the number of Charlie Burton, a history teacher. Reese saves Charlie from the Russians multiple times, but in the end, after Charlie points a gun at Reese, the protagonists realize that Charlie Burton is Elias. Elias spares Reese for saving his life. After Reese saves Carter from Elias, whose number had come up, she decides to meet Reese. However, neither Carter nor Fusco knows about the machine. In a later episode, Elias is arrested by Carter, but even in prison, he orders Moretti's death using a car bomb. In the final episode of season 1, Finch is captured by Root, a former contract killer. Root initially appears as an anonymous hacker who hacks Finch but later hires HR to kill herself using the alias Dr. Caroline Turing to fool the protagonists. She then abducts Finch to get information about the machine. Reese has to figure out how Finch gets the numbers on his own. He finally realizes the system uses the Dewey Decimal System, where each word corresponds to consecutive numbers of social security numbers. With the machine's help, Reese saves Finch from Root, but she warns that she will return. While on a mission to save a number, Reese gets arrested in a bank basement alongside three other men and transferred to Rikers. FBI agent Donnelly is convinced one of them is the man in the suit and uses Carter to question all of them. It seems Finch and Reese had pre planned for such a situation. As Reese answers the questions, Finch quickly hacks and updates government databases accordingly. 
Now, even the special counsel, who has been searching for the man in the suit, suspects he is being held at Rikers. They use Hirsch, who killed Nathan, to eliminate the suspects. Hirsch creates a scene to enter the prison, intending to kill all suspects linked to the man in the suit. Agent Donnelly starts suspecting Reese and orchestrates a fight between prisoners without guards to observe John's military skills. Other prisoners attack him, but Elias, also in the prison, tries to help Reese, who rejects it. After seeing the attack on Reese, Carter blames Donnelly, making him more suspicious. She then questions another prisoner, provoking him to attack her, leading the FBI to arrest him as the man in the suit. Reese is released from prison and meets up with Carter to thank her. Suddenly, Agent Donnelly, suspicious of Carter, appears and arrests both Reese and Carter. While the trio is in Donnelly's vehicle, Finch receives a number belonging to Donnelly. He tries to warn him, but it's too late as their vehicle is involved in an accident. Kara Stanton appears, kills Donnelly, and sedates Reese. Carter, who becomes unconscious, later escapes the scene. Reese wakes up with a bomb vest strapped to his chest alongside Mark Snow. It becomes apparent that Kara seeks revenge against the country and CIA that betrayed her. Let's recount what happened to her after the Ordo's attack. After the Ordo's attack, Kara also survived and regained consciousness in a Chinese hospital. An old man named Greer from Decima Technologies appeared and gave her a task against the U.S. government, promising to reveal who sold the laptop with secrets to China in return. Back in the present, Kara activates the bomb vest and sends Reese and Snow to the Department of Defense to steal hardware. It turns out she actually wanted to release a super virus capable of crippling major networks, including the machine. She releases the virus and leaves Snow and Reese behind. Snow exits the building to find his CIA partners to defuse the bomb, while Reese heads to the rooftop to minimize collateral damage. Finch, waiting on the rooftop, defuses the bomb. Kara calls Greer after completing her task and receives the name of the person who sold the laptop to China. She gets into her car, but Snow has already taken a seat inside. The car explodes, killing both Kara and Snow. A flashback reveals the name Kara received from Greer, which is none other than Harold Finch. Samin Shaw, a government assassin working for the machine alongside Hacker Cole, was unaware of the machine's true nature, referring to it as research and their handler as control. When Cole obtained information about the machine, control sent an assassin team to eliminate them. Cole died, but Shaw managed to neutralize the targets. Feeling betrayed, Shaw joined Finch after he introduced himself. As the virus spread, the machine slowed down, causing delayed number predictions. Even the special counsel became concerned. The machine provided the number of Ernest Thornhill, which turned out to be a survival instinct of the machine, as Thornhill was a non-existent entity created by the machine. Root texted Finch, and without any other option, Finch joined her. They realized the machine would reboot itself against the virus once it completed giving admin access to whoever answered a call. Decima likely knew this and posted guards near every payphone. Root and Finch entered the New York library, followed by Reese and Shaw. The machine made a call, and both Root and Reese answered, receiving administrative access. Root and Finch entered the Hanford nuclear facility where machine located, followed by Reese and Shaw, and then by the special counsel and Hirsch. Surprisingly, the machine was no longer there. Finch explained that he had hidden a code allowing the machine to relocate itself in case of danger. They all left. Hirsch received an order from an unknown woman, likely Control, to kill the special counsel, which he did. Our team keeps Root in a psychiatric hospital. While there, she receives a call from the machine, indicating she has found a way to communicate with it. Weeks go by, and Root sets her escape plan in motion with the machine's help. However, government operative Hirsch tracks her down but Root manages to disarm him with the help of machine. 
Finch arrives at the hospital to find the staff incapacitated and Root gone. For the viewers, it is hard to believe that Harold sold the laptop to China. To clarify, we need to go back to 2010. Before Reese, Mr. Dillinger was working as Finch's partner. A number, Daniel Casey, shows up. Many people, including Reese and Kara from the CIA and Decima Technologies, want Casey dead. Dillinger saves Casey and brings him to Harold, who realizes Casey's last job was to find a way to access the machine. Although Casey failed, he learned enough to make Control want him dead and his laptop destroyed. Dillinger betrays Finch, steals the laptop, and sells it on the black market to China, but not before Finch modifies its code. The sale is interrupted by a special counsel agent, Shaw, who kills Dillinger, but one of the buyers escapes with the laptop. Casey is captured by Reese, who lets him live and provide safe passage to Canada. Control traces the laptop to China and orders Reese and Stanton to retrieve and destroy it. Then she gives a separate orders to kill Reese and Stanton to destroy any evidence. Back to present, Finch receives 38 numbers, all members of HR. HR supports the Russian drug mafia, particularly Peter Yogorov. Carter intercepts a drug delivery, causing Yogorov to suspect HR. She ignites a war between HR and the Russians by firing sniper shots at HR leader Alonzo Quinn, who blames the Russians. Quinn orders Simmons to round up the Russians. Reese learns of Carter's plan, and Finch deduces Quinn's identity as the head of HR. The Russians' numbers come up as they are now threatened by HR, but both groups are arrested by the FBI after Carter tips them off. Carter takes Yogorov into protective custody and gets a statement to arrest Quinn, but the judge she approaches is an HR member. Quinn, Simmons, and two HR cops wait for Carter at the judge's house, where Carter reveals she called Reese and Finch, recording HR's incriminating conversation. Reese breaks in, a shootout ensues, and Carter apprehends Quinn. Simmons later accesses a dashcam with Reese's picture. Simmons alerts HR and several criminal groups of Reese's identity, limiting Reese and Carter's movement options. Finch receives the number of John Reese, meaning every criminal in New York wants Reese dead. After overcoming many obstacles, our guys manage to hand Quinn over to the FBI, this concludes the end of HR, but Simmons is still at large. Reese and Carter reunite, and Finch approaches them. Suddenly, a payphone rings, signaling a new number. Pat Simmons appears and shoots Carter, who loses consciousness, which means the number corresponds to Carter. Sadly, Carter dies. The machine gives Pat Simmons' number. As he tries to flee the country, Fusco fights and arrests him. Later, Elias kills Simmons in the hospital in revenge for Carter's death. Fed up with the machine, Reese leaves the team and heads back to Colorado. Finch sends Fusco to convince him to return. Meanwhile, the machine produces the number of Arthur Claypool, Finch's MIT friend, who is dying from terminal cancer. Additionally, Arthur has memory issues, but he quickly recognizes Finch when Finch visits Claypool. It turns out Claypool created Samaritan, similar to the machine, capable of predicting the future through large-scale surveillance. Everyone thinks Samaritan was destroyed by the government in 2005, but Arthur confirms it wasn't and tries to take the team to the hardware's safe location. Before they leave, the woman who appeared as Arthur's wife is revealed to be Control, the government official in charge of the machine. She and Hirsch attempt to kill the team, but Root saves them. Finch, Arthur, and Shaw head toward the safe box in a bank. Realizing that Finch created a god, Arthur destroys the hardware containing Samaritan. Unfortunately, they are captured by a group named Vigilance, led by Peter Collier, who aims to expose the government's mass surveillance. Flashbacks reveal how Collier's brother was falsely accused of terrorism, held without trial, and committed suicide, 
leading Collier to join vigilance after getting an anonymous message about his brother's death. In the present, vigilance tries to kill the trio, but Reese and Fusco arrive in time to save them. Days later, it turns out the hardware Arthur destroyed was a fake, and the original was given to Greer of Decima Technologies by a bank employee. Now, the machine not only has a competitor, but it is also in the wrong hands. Vigilance leaks a classified document about Northern Lights, causing public outrage over large-scale surveillance. Senator Garrison publicly denies it and tells Control to destroy the machine. She deactivates the program and shreds Collier's file, labeled as a national threat. The machine directs Root to handle relevant numbers. Unfortunately, Decima makes a deal with Congressman Roger McCourt and Garrison to take government feeds. The machine orders the team to kill McCourt, but Finch disagrees, not wanting to kill anyone. This decision leads to dire consequences. Decima kidnaps Grace, and Finch has to turn himself in to save her. The machine produces numbers of control, a security advisor, Garrison, and Greer. Shaw and Reese lack the time to save them, so Vigilance captures all of them along with Finch, who was previously captured by Greer. With no other option, Reese joins forces with Hirsch to protect their bosses, and Shaw joins Root to manipulate Decima's servers. Vigilance conducts a private trial of their detainees, including Finch, broadcasting it live to the world. Hirsch finds a huge bomb and tries to deactivate it. Decima infiltrates Vigilance and rescues everyone except Finch and Peter. Greer reveals that Vigilance is a Decima creation to convince the government of the need for a system like Samaritan against an evil like Vigilance. The bomb, planted by Decima, explodes, killing many, including Hirsch. Greer kills Peter and orders Finch's execution, but Reese intervenes and saves him. Now, Samaritan is fully active, and Greer orders the elimination of the team. However, Root had previously manipulated some servers to create blind spots for the team, allowing them to escape and live with fake identities. Someone hands the autopsy report of Hirsch to Control, concluding Season 3. As Root manipulated Samaritan, our team adopts cover identities. Finch works as a professor while Reese works for the NYPD as Detective Riley. After some weeks, the machine gives Reese a number. Ali Hassan, who has built a communications network using VHF television antennas across New York that cannot be traced by the police according to the instructions of a gang called the Brotherhood. A man named Dominic leads the Brotherhood. Unfortunately, as Hassan's son is kidnapped by the Brotherhood, Reese seeks Elias's help to save him, they save Hassan and his son, allowing Finch to use VHF not only to hide from Samaritan but also to help people. The machine leads Finch to a new hideout inside an abandoned Interboro Rapid Transit Company station. The machine gives the number of Elias. Reese warns him, so Elias reroutes his way to a specially designed safe house with Reese. While Elias is looking for a safe box, Dominic enters and captures Anthony, who was working as Elias's right-hand man. Reese and Elias hide on another floor, but later Elias is captured by Dominic. Dominic is curious about what's inside the safe box. He threatens Elias to reveal the PIN number for the safe while others torture Anthony on a separate floor. With no other option, Elias reveals the PIN, and Dominic's men enter it. A sudden explosion wipes out Dominic's members and Anthony. Reese intervenes to save Elias, and it turns out Elias himself had planted this bomb to fool his enemies. Elias vows revenge for Anthony's death and warns Reese to stay out of the way once that day comes. Dominic realizes there is a mysterious third party behind Elias. Meanwhile, Samaritan takes mysterious actions like eliminating crime in New York for one day. It requests to talk with the machine, but when the machine refuses, Samaritan allows crime to increase dramatically in NYC. With no other option, the machine decides to talk with Samaritan, using Root as the interface for the machine and a little boy as the interface for Samaritan. When the discussion doesn't go well, Samaritan decides to destroy the machine. 
Unfortunately, during a mission, Shaw's identity is exposed, Samaritan agent Martin is given orders to kill her. She has to stay hidden underground. Samaritan engineers a stock market crash on Wall Street. The team goes to install software at the stock exchange to stabilize the market. However, they are almost immediately intercepted by Samaritan operatives, who corner them in a room. The machine simulates different scenarios to find the best option. Unfortunately, during the mission, Shaw is shot by Samaritan agents and vanishes without a trace. In a later episode, we can see that Shaw is in a bed under Samaritans. Meanwhile, Control slowly realizes they have been fooled by Samaritan as they have to rely on Samaritan for everything. Machine produces numbers of Dominic and Elias, it seems the two crime bosses are hellbent on killing each other. They reach his hideout in a bank in Manhattan, but the Brotherhood arrives and captures them all. The Brotherhood tortures Elias for his intel and Reese and Fusco for information on Harold. Elias tricks Dominic into killing his right-hand man, Link, to avenge Anthony's death. In Washington, D.C., Control interrogates a female Samaritan handler posing as a teacher about Samaritan strategy called the Correction. Root receives a call from Shaw for help. Surprised, she and Finch follow the machine's instructions to try to find Shaw, driving to a mental hospital that is also Samaritan's base. Samaritan's operatives capture Finch and Root and give the machine a choice, reveal its location, or both Root and Finch die. Root kills Martine by breaking her neck. The machine exchanges its location for Finch and Root's lives. Greer takes a group to search for the machine's location. Root tells Finch to reach that location before Samaritan to save the machine. Shaw is last seen being driven away in a van. Samaritan begins a series of power outages throughout the country. The machine allows Root and Reese access to its god mode and instructs Reese through an old fax machine to shoot the Brotherhood. Fusco, after managing to save himself from the Brotherhood, arrests Dominic and Elias. Dominic is killed by Samaritan snipers. Elias is also shot. Control believes the correction is Greer's plan for a terrorist attack on the Supreme Court, but it's actually a list, created by Samaritan, of people who need to be eliminated for the betterment of society, including control. Root and Finch manage to get high-capacity RAM and a compression algorithm. Reese regroups with Finch and Root at an electrical substation. They discover that the machine spread itself over the power grid in boxes attached to electrical poles, and that Samaritan has been causing the power surges to destroy the boxes. Finch and Root start downloading the machine's core code to a briefcase containing the compression algorithm and RAM chips. The team walks out with the briefcase to face more Samaritan operatives. This concludes the end of Season 4. Shaw is seen undergoing surgery by Samaritan operatives to have an electronic microchip implanted between her ear and her brainstem. Then, Samaritan runs thousands of simulations inside her mind to find the machine and our agents. All of them end with Shaw killing her friends. Finally, after over 7,000 simulations, Shaw finds her way back to New York and is reunited with Root. Root is overjoyed that Shaw is back, but Shaw, afraid of risking Root's life, threatens to shoot herself, simulation or not. Root threatens suicide as well, declaring that if Shaw dies, they both die, Shaw withdraws. Even after the 8th precinct also comes under attack, Reese and Finch decide to explain the machine and Samaritan to Fusco. The three meet along the East River near the Queensboro Bridge. Joined by Root and Shaw, the team is brought back together. Finch's number comes up when his cover identity is compromised due to a subconscious error, and Samaritan initiates a continuous dispatch of operatives on him. The team splits up during their escape, which results in Elias being killed by Samaritan agents while protecting Finch. Root joins Finch to protect him. Unfortunately, Root is shot by Samaritan operative Jeff Blackwell and placed in critical condition, while the police apprehend Finch, who is accused of treason. 
A devastated Finch provides a soliloquy on how he intends to abandon the principles he has long followed and vows to kill Samaritan. The machine calls Finch in the precinct, having taken on the voice of Root, who has died from her injuries. The machine sets every criminal in the precinct free to allow Finch to escape. Reese and Shaw realize that Finch's number came up not just because he was a victim, but also because he's a perpetrator against Greer and Samaritan. Reese and Fusco reunite with Shaw to protect their newest number, the President of the United States. They successfully manage to save him from a drone attack. Finch prepares to deploy his stolen computer virus named ICE-9. Finch infiltrates the NSA and uploads his virus onto the NSA's intranet but is captured before he can activate it. Greer tells Finch that Samaritan wishes to rule the world together with the machine. When Finch refuses to join, Greer sacrifices himself in an attempt to kill Finch by having all the oxygen removed from the room. Reese and Shaw infiltrate the building and activate a wireless modem to give the machine access within, allowing it to save Finch's life through a Morse code. Finch confronts Samaritan and, with the machine's encouragement, activates the virus. Samaritan uploads its copy to a satellite. The machine tells Finch that the only way to defeat Samaritan is to upload a copy of the machine to the satellite and that whatever building he uses for the upload will be destroyed by a cruise missile. He locks John in the Federal Reserve basement to sacrifice himself instead of Reese. Finch realizes he's on the wrong rooftop, having been tricked by Reese and the machine. Reese tells Finch he plans to sacrifice himself, as saving one life can make a real difference depending on the person. A grieving Finch leaves as Reese holds off Samaritan agents. A week later, the world recovers from the virus, and Shaw kills Blackwell to avenge Root. She meets with a recovering Fusco as the machine's copy returns to Earth before contacting Shaw, while Finch returns to his former fiancée, Grace. This concludes the end of the Person of Interest review.